Did you know that 90% of Americans are unprepared for a major disaster? The Red Cross has compiled a list of 20 must-have foods that could mean the difference between thriving and barely surviving when crisis hits. Whether you're a seasoned prepper or just starting out, this information could save your life in a crisis. When it comes to survival, water is the undisputed champion of essentials. The CDC recommends stockpiling at least one gallon of water per person per day for a minimum of three days. But why is water so critical? Without it, your body can't regulate temperature, remove waste, or lubricate joints. In a crisis, clean water becomes scarce quickly, making it the most valuable resource you can store. But don't stop at three days. The Red Cross suggests expanding your water stockpile to cover two weeks if possible. Think about it. In a prolonged emergency, would you rather have too much water or not enough? And remember, it's not just for drinking. You'll need water for hygiene and food preparation, too. Now let's talk about food. The key to a solid emergency food supply is variety. You want a mix of dehydrated, freeze-dried, and canned options. This isn't just about preventing boredom. It's about ensuring you get all the nutrients your body needs to stay healthy and strong when the chips are down. Dried beans are a powerhouse in your emergency pantry. They're packed with fiber and protein, keeping you fuller for longer. Plus, they have an incredibly long shelf life. Whole grains like brown rice and whole grain pasta are another must-have. They provide sustained energy and essential nutrients that your body craves during stressful times. Don't forget about fruits and vegetables. Canned options are perfect for long-term storage. But here's a pro tip. Opt for lower sodium or no salt added varieties. In a crisis, maintaining your health is crucial and excess sodium is the last thing you need. Now let's address a common misconception about stockpiling. Many people think it's all about quantity. The more the better, right? Wrong. It's about striking a balance between quantity and nutritional value. What good is a mountain of food if it leaves you malnourished? Focus on foods that offer a high nutritional payoff per serving. Here's a practical tip that could save you from wasting your carefully curated stockpile. Implement a simple rotation system. Place newer items at the back and older ones at the front. This way you're always using the oldest items first, ensuring nothing goes to waste. It's a small step that makes a big difference in the long run. Remember, even in a crisis, you don't have to sacrifice balanced nutrition. With careful planning, you can create meals that not only sustain you, but also provide comfort in challenging times. As the Red Cross puts it, even when the outside world is beyond your control, the way you eat doesn't have to be. But what about those times when you might need to leave your home quickly? That's where water purification tablets or filters come in handy. If you're forced to evacuate and rely on questionable water sources, these could be literal lifesavers. They're small, lightweight, and could mean the difference between staying hydrated or risking serious illness. Now that we've covered the basics of food and water, let's talk about something equally critical but often overlooked, non-edible essentials. In a crisis, these items can be just as important as your food stockpile. Have you ever considered what would happen if you couldn't access your medication during an emergency? The Red Cross emphasizes the importance of having at least a two-week supply of any medications you or your family members regularly take. This isn't just about convenience, it could be a matter of life and death. Think about it. In a disaster, pharmacies might be closed or inaccessible. Having your necessary medications on hand could make all the difference. But it's not enough to just have the medications. You need to store them properly. Most medications should be kept in a cool, dry place, away from direct sunlight. Some might require refrigeration. Make sure you understand the storage requirements for your specific medications and plan accordingly. Now let's shine a light on another crucial aspect of emergency preparedness, power sources. In a crisis, the power grid might fail. Without electricity, you could find yourself quite literally in the dark. That's where batteries, solar power banks, and other alternative power sources come in. Stock up on a variety of battery sizes to power essential devices like flashlights and radios. Rechargeable batteries can be a smart long-term investment. Solar power banks are another excellent option, allowing you to harness the sun's energy to keep your devices charged. 
Remember, in an emergency, communication can be crucial. Keeping your phone charged could be your lifeline to the outside world. But what about when the lights go out and you need to find your way around? This is where emergency lighting becomes essential. Candles can work in a pinch, but they pose a fire hazard. Instead, consider LED lanterns or headlamps. They're safer, more efficient, and can last for hours on a single set of batteries. Now let's talk about something that might make you a bit uncomfortable. Sanitation and hygiene. In a crisis, maintaining cleanliness isn't just about comfort, it's about preventing the spread of disease. Stock up on soap, hand sanitizer, toothpaste, and toilet paper. For women, don't forget feminine hygiene products. These items might seem basic, but they become incredibly valuable when supplies run short. Here's something you might not have considered. In a severe crisis, electronic payment systems might fail. ATMs could be down, and stores might not be able to process credit cards. That's why the Red Cross advises keeping some cash on hand. How much? They suggest enough to cover your basic needs for two weeks to a month. Keep this emergency cash in small denominations. It'll be easier to use if you need to make smaller purchases. Now, I promised you a practical tip. And here it is. Create a comprehensive checklist tailored to your specific needs. Start by listing all the medications your family uses regularly. Then, think about your power needs. What devices are essential? What kind of batteries do they use? Consider your hygiene routine. What products do you use daily? Don't forget about special needs. Do you wear glasses? Include a spare pair in your emergency kit. Do you have pets? They'll need supplies too. By creating a personalized checklist, you ensure that nothing crucial is overlooked. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about some unexpected items that could be real lifesavers in a crisis. The Red Cross recommends a few things you might not have considered. But trust me, these could make all the difference when disaster strikes. First up, emergency blankets. You might be thinking, I already have blankets at home. Why do I need special ones? Well, these aren't your average cozy throws. Emergency blankets, also known as space blankets, are incredibly lightweight, compact, and can retain up to 90% of your body heat. In a situation where you're without power or need to evacuate quickly, these could literally save your life by preventing hypothermia. Next on the list, physical maps. In our age of smartphones and GPS, you might wonder why you'd need paper maps. But what happens when the power's out? Cell towers are down, and your phone's battery is dead. Suddenly, that old-school map becomes your lifeline. Make sure you have detailed maps of your local area and any potential evacuation routes. It's a simple addition to your emergency kit that could prove invaluable. Now let's talk about face masks. The recent pandemic has certainly highlighted their importance, but they're crucial in other emergency situations too. In the aftermath of a natural disaster, air quality can be severely compromised due to dust, debris, or even harmful chemicals. Having a supply of quality face masks can protect your respiratory system when you need it most. Here's where things get interesting. The Red Cross recommends something you might already have in your toolbox, duct tape. As the saying goes, if you can't fix it with duct tape, you're not using enough duct tape. This versatile tool can patch clothing, repair tents, make splints, and even seal cracks to protect against chemical attacks. In a crisis, duct tape could be worth its weight in gold. Candles are another surprising addition to the list. You might think they're just for creating a cozy atmosphere, but in an emergency, they become a reliable source of light. When used in conjunction with other light sources, candles can help conserve battery life in your flashlights and lanterns. Just remember to use them safely and never leave them unattended. Now, here's something many people overlook. Pet care. If you have furry friends, they're part of your family, and their needs should be factored into your emergency preparations. The Red Cross advises including a sufficient supply of pet food in your stockpile. Remember, in a crisis, your pets are relying on you to keep them safe and fed. Let's talk about how these unexpected items can be used creatively in multiple ways during a crisis. That emergency blanket? It can also serve as a ground cover, a makeshift shelter, or even a signaling device if it has a reflective side. Duct tape can be used to create waterproof containers, 
repair broken tools, or even fashion improvised shoes if needed. Candles aren't just for light. They can be used to start fires, waterproof matches, or even as a makeshift lubricant in a pinch. And those face masks? Beyond protecting your lungs, they can be used to filter water in an emergency or as a makeshift bandage if needed. Now that we've covered the essential items for your emergency stockpile, let's talk about how to build and maintain it effectively. Stockpiling isn't a new concept. Throughout history, people have stored food and supplies to prepare for uncertain times. It's a tradition that has provided peace of mind and self-reliance for generations. But how do you start building your stockpile, especially if you're living in a small space? The key is to be strategic about your storage solutions. If you're in an apartment, consider using the space under your bed for flat storage containers. Got a spare closet? Transform it into a mini pantry. Even the area above your kitchen cabinets can be put to good use with some creative thinking. Remember, it's not just about storing a lot of food. It's about storing the right food. The Red Cross emphasizes the importance of balance in your stockpile. Sure, you need those long-lasting staples, but don't forget about including some comfort foods and nutritious snacks. Speaking of snacks, let's talk about some smart choices that pack a nutritional punch. Popcorn kernels are a great option. They're lightweight, take up little space, and can provide a comforting treat during stressful times. Plus, popping corn can be a fun activity to keep spirits up when you're stuck indoors. Nuts are another excellent choice for your stockpile. They're calorie dense and full of healthy fats and proteins. They have a long shelf life and can be eaten as is or used in various recipes. Just be sure to store them in airtight containers to maintain freshness. Natural peanut butter is a stockpile superstar. It's packed with protein and healthy fats, making it a nutritious and filling option. The Red Cross advises choosing natural versions over processed ones that often contain added sugars and unhealthy fats. Remember, in a crisis, maintaining your health is crucial. Now here's something many people overlook when building their stockpile. Important documents. In an emergency, you might need quick access to identification, insurance policies, or medical records. The Red Cross recommends storing copies of these documents in a waterproof envelope. This simple step could save you a world of trouble if you need to evacuate quickly or if your home is damaged. So how do you put all this information into action? Here's a step-by-step -step plan to start or improve your stockpile today. 1. Assess your needs. Consider your family size, any dietary restrictions, and special requirements like medications or pet food. Two. Start small. Begin with a three-day supply and gradually build up to two weeks or more. 3. Choose your storage space. Identify areas in your home where you can store supplies safely and accessibly. 4. Make a list. Write down all the items you need, including food, water, medications, and non-edible essentials. 5. Shop smart. Look for sales and buy in bulk when it makes sense. Remember to check expiration dates. 6. Organize your stockpile. Use a first-in, first-out system to ensure you're using older items before they expire. 7. Maintain your stockpile. Regularly check your supplies, rotate items, and replace anything that's expired or been used. 8. Don't forget water. Store at least one gallon per person per day and consider water purification methods as a backup. 9. Include comfort items. Add some treats or favorite non-perishable foods to boost morale during stressful times. 10. Review and adjust. Reassess your stockpile every few months and make changes based on your family's needs. Remember, water, non-perishables, medications, power sources, and even duct tape all play crucial roles in your emergency kit. But being prepared isn't about living in fear. It's about empowering yourself and your family to face uncertainty with confidence. Every item you add to your stockpile is a step towards resilience. Whether you're just starting out or improving an existing kit, today is the perfect day to take action. Don't wait for a crisis to hit. Start small, but start now. Your future self will thank you for the peace of mind that comes with knowing you're ready for whatever tomorrow might bring. Just in case you were curious, we have a video that covers A to Z, how to survive the first 100 days after the collapse. Click the video on screen now to learn more.